and welcome back to another episode of Foxy No Tales Minecraft Adventures here inside of my Java survival server of all the places in all of the world. How did I end up here with 53 levels and all the stuff I had so many months ago? So, okay, a couple of things then. If you didn't know, my Java survival world that we haven't played on for such a long time is now a server and you can join this server by becoming a patron pledger. That's right, you can come and play with me. So I'm going to be doing videos in this world again, which is totally awesome. Second of all, the reason that I sound a little bit funny is because I'm shoving Easter eggs into my mouth right now. And it's not even Easter yet. It's two weeks to go before Easter. <laughs> anyway, let's hop down here. And let's have a look at this little building I built. And uh, I was building this, and I was building away, and then I thought... I'm not allowed to build that. I built this in creative mode. I didn't even think about it. I've been so busy flying around worlds at the moment, setting up servers, that when I came to set this one up, I was doing it in creative mode. Just this. Nothing else in this world, but just this room. Uh, not the beacons either. They were they are legitimate with the kill beacons from many, many years ago. Oh, years? Months ago. If you haven't seen much of this series, please go back through the playlist right now and start from the beginning. Otherwise, you're going to have no idea what we're talking about. Anyway... So I made this for people to spawn in or near, and inside of here we have some rule books. And inside the rule book there are rules, there are pages and pages and pages of rules, but uh, I'm not going to get into that. So anyway, without further ado, let's just go through uh, what we're going to do today. Because we're not really going to do a great deal. We're going to blow off the cobwebs. We're going to have a look around at what some people that have already done have already done. And if we look at, I am the only one online, it is only me. But we're going to have a look. We're going to see what's been going on. So in here... You probably have no idea what this used to look like, but there used to be four double chests. And this is an iron farm, by the way. And the four double chests were getting full because we're getting too much iron. Because now this is on a server, and we're in the spawn chunks where we are right now, this thing is running 24 hours a day. So we get it. Oh, there we go. There's one now. What convenient timing. There's an iron golem. Set it on fire. And what happens is, eventually, there we go. So he burns to death. And his iron and his poppy go into that hopper there. The poppies come this way and end up going into this chest. And as you can see, we got a lot of poppies. So we've got one, two, three, three, three and nearly four double chests worth of poppies. And on this side, we have nearly five double chests worth of, of, of iron. And now, I only cleared this out two days ago. So that's a lot of iron. That's a lot of iron we're getting through this thing. It is a double iron farm because there's one at the top and one halfway down as well so there's too much two lots of iron to come through and you might notice as we walk around this area that there are things like this where endermen have been to grief but what i've done since making this a server is i've added a command block down under the ground right underneath the spawn chunks in fact it's pretty much right underneath this thing but underneath the bedrock at the bottom of the world which if we go hang on if we go into game mode three, we can sink through the ground like so in spectator mode, past our villagers, past our potion room, past, past our smelting room and past our mine all the way down through bedrock and somewhere around here, there it is, look, one lonely little command block that says anti-enderman griefing system. And the reason I've done that is just because it's annoying. It doesn't add anything to the game. It adds no, <gasps> I mean, it doesn't add any value to the game. It is just annoying. So let's go back over here. So that's something I've done before the episode. Now, the redstone crafter, he's been in here and he fixed my chicken farm. And because of that, we're getting tons of chicken. And I've already emptied all these feathers out once. Oh, man, not again. Right, let's, just, let's do this then. Redstone crafter person, can you come back and, and make storage better for this? In fact, if you could link that up down here into the storage room so that all of this stuff gets put into some of these chests that would be even better and this storage room we've been sorting out so i had my old storage room up there which we'll uh, have a look at in a minute and down here is the new one that i built not so long ago in my in this series and these are the shulker boxes i got from the end in the last episode that we went through and all of the stuff has been filtered through and it's now in here but this is even full up with feathers as well if we go to whichever one feathers are over here there we go. Oh, it's not. So let's chuck these in here then. I thought this was full. So that's good. So we've got plenty more room for feathers, which is very nice. So this is my storage room. It's got all of the cool stuff that in that I store. All right, let's go up here. 
And let's have a little bit of nostalgia now and let's go back into my very old, sto old storage room and you'll see that pretty much most of the chests in here are empty. There's nothing in them anymore or most of it's been moved down into the new storage room. So that's that. That's all I've done pretty much since um, turning this into a server and inviting people along because I wanted to wait until we did a video before I got, before I got involved in it too much, let's put it that way. So, that, whoa. Hooray! Fireworks! <laughs> So we've got, I think, three players, uh, uh, three players excluding me at the moment that have been, I think, relatively regularly coming on here and working on here. I'm going to go to the nether because that's the quickest way to show you what other people have done. And my minecart's at the bottom. And if I pop out of that, I know it'll go come out of the front where I should come out. I come out of the back, which is no good. So let's go into the nether. And if we hop down here, right at the bottom of there is the end. Now the redstone crafter, right? Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna have a little bit of an admission of guilt here. When I first loaded my world into this server, I uploaded the wrong version of it, and it was the version before I built my Enderman farm, right? So the redstone crafter came on here and was like, "Oh, there's no Enderman farm. I'm gonna build one," and he built one. And then I found the right world save and thought, "Ah, well, I need to upload the right one. So what am I gonna do?" So I went into MC Edit and I I added I I copied his one and put it near my one as well so we now have two enderman farms so we'll have a look at that in a little while but if we go this way which is it's a bit gross it's not it's not really been worked on ever as well but if we go up here i believe this was done only a couple of days ago and this was done by people i can't remember the name i can't remember the usernames i'm sorry they're new i'll get to know them soon so as we head up here we can see that the uh, the other people on the server oh there's a little room here now this wasn't here last time i came up they've made they've used special game glitches to, uh, to get rid of the top layer of bedrock just there so that we can come up through onto here and this we can make like gold farms and stuff up here which is awesome so I don't know what's in this chest just some bits and bobs some TNT in there and some pistons very nice very nice and then there's this uh, portal here which allows you to come back through again unfortunately you can't portal up above the nether floor which means you do have to go up through that ladder which is a little bit annoying but yeah you can portal back again but if we go back through this portal we're just going to end up back where we were a second ago which is here now so that's that so we can get above the nether now so i'm hoping that i'm going to see some farms so gold farms and things turning up up there very soon and this is a new tunnel that i, I believe as well this is redstone craft has done this i think yeah red crafter He's done this. Now there's one that way as well. Let's go for this one first and then let's see what happens at both of them. They're probably both two different bases. Yeah, so this is one and I believe this is the Red Crafter or Redstone Crafter's base and it's looking pretty awesome so far. So he's obviously made this nether tunnel bit here and he's come down these steps here. He's made this and he's done all of this underground thing like a mine. And I think it's really cool looking. He's got some storage. He's oh, uh, he doesn't. Oh, he's got some books. So he's obviously got a fishing farm somewhere and he's got his ender chest there. So that's looking pretty cool. I like that. I like it. I don't know if he's mined into this area. I guess he probably has, unless this is natural ge terrain generation like that. Looks like he's got himself a horse. Oh, the path goes around this way, though. Is there more? Is there more? Oh, there's more! He's got... Oh! He's got a chicken machine as well. Oh, his has got a big chest. Wow, okay, so that, he's got a chicken machine. And there's a door here. What's this? What is this? Is this his... Oh, this is his fish farm. Okay, cool. So he's got a fishing farm as well. So, uh, wow, and he's got loads of books and fish and stuff. Awesome! Awesome. So that's... That's another one. Right, where's that other tunnel? So there was another one leading off. Here it is, down here, look. And this leads off somewhere else. And we've got a nice bridge over a lava lake here. And then uh, then this goes through here, like this. So this, wow, okay, this has expanded somewhat since I was last here. So we've just popped out of that little building there. It looks like we've got some pig and sheep and cow farms coming up here. Now, I have been in this house before. I flew here. Oh, and we've got a load of sugar cane coming up around here as well, look. And there is a... Um, a tree farm over there but this has got another fishing farm in everyone's fishing mad at the minute by the looks of things and uh oh and there's a there's a hopper there right okay huh interesting very interesting very interesting things and this person has got lots of things as well but i'm not 100 percent sure who this person is that lives here so it would be quite handy to know who that is maybe put a sign up so i know so i can say your name 
I know where we are. We're coming back up to my base from this side. So down here, let's fly up a bit so we can point at things. Got my skeleton XP farm there. We've got my haunted mansion here. We've got my tree farmy place here. We've got my villager breeder over here. We've got my villager trading area. We've got my foxy no tail statue face, which I've updated the eyes on so it matches my new skin. We've got my find the frame area, winner's area. We've got my mob spawner. We've got my farms. We've got my sheep farm. We've got all sorts. And we've got... A million iron golems in here because uh, because of how I went crazy with my villagers not so long ago. We've got my swimming pool, my farmer's game. We've got my campfire area, which is here. And then we've got a new face, a new face. And this is Jamie Kennard. Jamie Kennard's face has appeared here on Winner Street. And I have invited anyone to join to do their starter houses on Winner Street. So it's in my area. So they can come and do that. And he's made... Quite a nice little building on the inside. Um, yeah, got so, got a nice bed and some end rods. So he's obviously been to the end. I'm guessing they've probably already gone and got themselves sugar boxes and elytras and stuff like that. I haven't been on the server much, so I've not really seen a great deal of them. But I do plan on being on it more and more as time goes on. And here's my little fishing farm. That Again, I thank, I think it was the Redstone Crafter for fixing that for me as well. I believe it was him. I can't remember. My villagers haven't come back they have all been eaten by nasty zombies apart from one last time i was here but he's probably gone now as well oh no he's still here that one's still there but the rest of them are gone and can you remember my very last episode um i was doing odd jobs right i was fixing things and i was naming stuff and i went and i came milking my cow there were two animals that i completely forgot to name that i'm going to do now so i'm going to hop down here i'm going to go into my ridiculously rubbish storage room i'm going to grab a couple of name tags egg i'm going to name one and the other one i'm going to name eggs baby so we've got egg and eggs baby and if you don't know what that's in reference to you're about to see my first ever animal that i had in this world all those many many years ago when i first started this world was this chicken here and it wasn't that one that's his baby it was this one and that was egg and i got that from a spawn egg that the saints all eternal gave me back in my storyline and there we go that's eggs baby because that was the first egg that was hatched from egg so there we go that's uh, finally all of the animals in this area named. Now there's one more thing that will be standing out to a lot of you that are watching this. A lot of you that used to watch this series that are watching this again now. There's one thing that obviously I haven't done. And I should do. But I haven't done it. And I'm going to do it. So I ha I can't speak. It's all that Easter egg. So you're right, the tree of life. I haven't done it. I haven't done it at the beginning of this video. Now this tree of life is where I used to come in and I would put a sign down for everybody that I thought was awesome enough to have a sign that wrote me lovely YouTube comments and things like that. And since I stopped doing this, I've hardly had any YouTube comments telling me how wonderful I am. It's not very nice. I need more comments telling me how wonderful I am and how awesome my world is. <laughs> and then, then you might as well also get on the tree of life so there you go so yeah write a nice comment or just write a comment if i find it as a useful comment a tip or a trick or something cool then i will probably add you to the tree of life in my next video if it's the best one anyway okay so now we've blown all the cobwebs off and we're back used to my world and we know what's going on we need to build something don't we what should we build i don't know what to build today so if we go if we look back through my channel and we go to the last video that i recorded in this world the next one I was going to do, the plan was to make a dye farm for lots of different types of dyes. And I never did it. I never ended up doing it. But I still want to do that. One reason is because I want to dye my shulker boxes. And another reason is because it's handy to have. But there's, they're quite complicated things, dye farms. Because you need cocoa bean farms. And you need cactus farms. And you need all those other types of farms. So what I think we should do is I think we should go gathering a load of resources that we can use to start making these farms. So... Without further ado, I know where there's a... Uh, uh, blah, blah. There is a... Uh, look! One of those! Made of yellow! It's a yellow one! A desert! That's what I'm after. The desert. I can get some cactuses, which is cool. And then we'll go find a jungle and go get some cocoa beans and some jungle wood. And then we'll go find a swamp and we'll go and get some of those blue flowers. In fact, we're going to make a cool little blue flowery machine in the swamp. That'll be quite cool, I think. I love getting the cactus, the cactus loves getting me, I bump into it and go, ah, ouch. Right, so, oh, got too much actually, too many cactus, we now have 64, 64, 8 cactus, 
Now we need to go find either a jungle or a swamp. Oh, in fact, let's not get a swamp yet, because I don't think I've got the right stuff on me to be playing swamps. Let's go find a jungle. Okay, then. If we look at our map here on Chunk Base, I've filtered out the jungle biomes. This is where we are here. And over here, this looks to be our closest jungle, which is around about four and a half thousand blocks away, which is quite a long way away, but there doesn't seem to be a great deal closer than that. So that's where we're going to have to go for that. What's this thing in the water? Why is the water strange there? What's going on here? There's no water in it. How weird is that? I'm bobbing up and down underwater in the water. What? What? Okay, has anyone ever seen anything like that before? That's a bit weird. Oh, I spy with my little eye something beginning with L. That's right, lava. No, it's a village with a blacksmith. I haven't, I haven't been to a village in a long time. Let's see what they've got. Have you got anything worth having, Mr. Villagers? Have you got any presents for... No. Bread and trousers. Bread and trousers? What are you trying to pull here? What side of swindle is this? This is a swizz, Mr. Villager. I wanted diamonds and you've given me bread and trousers. I don't even want your trousers. Your smelly second-hand trousers. No, thank you very much. No, thank you. I should be on my way. Wow, look at that. Wow, that looks like amplified terrain. That's amazing. That's awesome. There's some bad lighting glitch. No, it's not a lighting glitch. It's just a big hole inside. That wow, this is amazing. Oh, now I'm inside it. Flying around. Ow. Okay, you probably can't see a great deal. It's very dark in here. Past the lava. But that was cool. Oh, a desert village. Has that got a blacksmith? No, it doesn't look to have. That's a shame. And here we are. Jungle. A jungle. Let's have a quick fly round, see if we can see any jungle temples, because they're quite kind of awesome, right? And if not, we'll just grab some cocoa beans, and then we'll be on our way. Through the hole! Whoa! Look! Hey! Look at that! A jungle temple! That was good. But it is up in... Wow. Up in the sky a bit. Yeah, it's a bit high up. Let's go. Let's go explore the jungle temple of doom. The jungle temple of certain doom! What's up here? Nothing. Right, let's get some torches out. We don't want it to be dark, do we? We don't want to be setting off any traps. Now, I don't think I've ever successfully done a jungle temple properly. Oh, did you see that? We nearly got got by that dispenser then. You meanie. There we go. Let's put that down there. And there's another dispenser over there. I see you. I see Ow! You got me. You've got loads of arrows in you. I'll have those. Thank you very much. And we'll have those. Thank you. In fact, we might as well take the dispensers. Very useful dispensers. Very useful. Very useful. What's in here? Gold! Many gold! That's good. Very nice. And I think if we dig through one of these walls somewhere... Here we go. We'll get the other treasure as well. Now, I believe there is a way to open this without <laughs> destroying the wall. But I don't know how you do it. I know there's levers on the back, but I've never managed to figure out the... Uh, how it works, so let's just take that iron there and a bit of rotten flesh. I'll tell you what, we'll have the chest and we'll take the redstone as well. Redstone's always good. And is this the only type of monument that you get that has redstone? I know the te the desert temples technically do because they've got a pressure plate, but that's it. it. All it is is a pressure plate. These have actually got proper redstone with pistons and dust and levers and all sorts. Are these the only types of buildings that do have that? Or are there other types? I'd like to know. I think I actually do have cocoa beans at home. I don't really need to come here. But that'll do. We've got... We've got a good amount of jungle wood now, and we've got a reasonable number of cocoa beans, so that'll do. We don't need any more of that. We can go home. There we go. So we're a thousand blocks in the air. There is no ground below us. So if we just set ourselves at a nice sort of, I don't know, zero degrees, and maybe about 87 degrees, that should, that should take us home-ish. Let's see. Let's see how far we get without me having to press another rocket. Right, we're actually going back slightly in the other direction because we've gone too far. So if I start flying directly down now... Yeah, here we go. We're home. There's the desert. Yeah, we were massively, massively overshooting. We were going far too far. So a thousand blocks up was more than enough to travel over 5,000 um, horizontally. So there we go. That's it. We're home now. We've got some, we've got some things. 
Right, we've got some cactus and some cocoa beans and some jungle wood. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get one of these spare shulker boxes. And I'm going to go fill this with all of the things that we're going to need for our different types of dyes. So let's just have a quick look at what else we've got while we're in here. We should have some dye bits. Uh, in fact, that looks like a dye chest up there. So we've got... We've got a few of the different things already. We don't have many of the cocoa beans. We don't have much of the cactus green. Light blue dye we can get from lapis, but we can also get that from those flowers in the um, in the swamp, which we're going to look at in a minute. Bone meal's easy to get hold of. Lime is easy to make once you've got cactus. And the red and yellow, we can get as much red as we like from those flowers. Yellow, ew, yellow's slightly harder to get, I think. I don't know if there's any automatic way of getting yellow. Have we got a flower chest anywhere, though? Ah, oh, the sunflower gives us yellows. That's right, so the f sunflower plant and the rose bush gives us yellow, so they're dead easy to get. What else do we need? It's the blue that's going to be the most expensive, because that's lapis. The rest of them should be quite easy, unless there's another way of getting blue. Right, let's go see if we can make a, uh, a like, a, a blue flower farm. We're going to need a reasonable amount of bone meal in order to get this blue orchid farm to work. So instead of going to my enderman farm to repair my elytra before we go, I'm going to go over to my skeleton spawner and do it there. And that way I'll get a load of bones as well and we can turn that into bone meal. Now how do I get in there? I think it's this entrance over here that I've just flown past. Let's go. Here it is. Here's my wonderful skeleton spawner and hopefully we've already got a load of bones here already. Yes, we have. So we'll hang about here for a bit. We'll see if we can repair our elytra and then we'll grab a load of the bones and make some bone meal and, and we'll go and sort it out. But here you go. The skeletons are already flowing through. I'm going to wait for them to uh, appear at the bottom there and then I'm going to sort them all out. And now I remember how painfully slow and inefficient this skeleton farm is. You get hardly any XP from it. I realise I've got other mending stuff on, so it's using that as well. But I've been here absolutely ages and hardly got anywhere. The good news is we've got plenty of bones and we've got plenty of bone meal. But I'm going to head off. I know my elytra aren't fully fixed, but it doesn't matter because the, the swamp is very, very nearby. So I'll see you when we get there. Here we go. A swamp just over here. Not too far at all, really, which is very, very handy. So we'll just park ourselves down somewhere over here and we're going to make, make a little flowery McSpawner McJob. I know what I mean. I know what I mean. If you don't know what I mean, that's not my fault that I can't speak properly. It's your fault for not listening properly. And look, look at all these baddies. Look at all these baddies hanging around. Let's get rid of these guys. Let's do it the old-fashioned fun way. And another creeper. Let's get rid of that guy. Pew! Oh, I, missed. Oh, I did get him. I thought I missed by a mile then, but it got him. Wow. Right, okay. Let's get building this thing. Oh no. I've got no pistons. I've got some sticky pistons. Don't really want sticky pistons. I want normal pistons. I've got some wood though. So I've hardly got any cobblestone. Am I going to be able to make any? Oh man. I've got iron. I haven't got a crafting table. How did I come all this way out here without a crafting table? I have not been planning ahead. <laughs> Here we go, we've got three stacks of cobblestone now, so let's grab a, a stack of that, a stack of that, a couple of stacks of that, and let's see how many pistons we can make. And I don't have the recipe in here for pistons, brilliant. Now, is it, I think it's like that, isn't it? And then that, and then that, and then that. Yay, that's how we make pistons, fantastic. So we're going to be able to make 48 pistons altogether, that's good. That's all we need, 48 is plenty. Right, so what I've done here is I've got a dispenser underneath some grass blocks, which is linked up to a little clock. So when there's something in that dispenser, i.e. bone mail, it's going to keep ticking. And that's going to fill this little area up here like this. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some pistons on either side of this to hold it in place and move it backwards and forwards, which will break the items that's on the top as that's going. So I'm going to link it in. So each time that fires, the pistons fire and push it from one side to the other. So it's always breaking as soon as it's fired. And that way we should get items very very quickly and we can just stand here and pick up the blue flowers okay so this probably won't work the way i've got this wired up at the minute is that we have this clock and off the clock we've got a load of repeaters running into the bottom of those pi uh, blocks underneath those pistons there but we've got the same thing going on on uh, if i can get back down let's move these blocks so i can get up and down a bit quicker they've got the same thing going on over this side and it's the same amount of delay between both sets of repeaters so that's going to push as that one's going to push which means they're both going to push against each other which is no good so i'm thinking we're going to have to delay one one side somehow and then uh, and then do the other side so we're gonna have to see how this works so what I'm gonna have to do is if I come around here and if I grab a load of bone meal let's say we've got 64 bone meal and let's just 
Oh, it's not very good, is it? What happened there? Let's put that back. Let's uh, just do a little staircase up like that so we can get to it. If we put that bow meal inside of there, we'll see. Yeah, they're just going to keep firing that side. That side's firing at the same time. Oh, I haven't done any redstone. That was silly. Yeah, but they can't go anywhere because they're firing at the same time. Whoa, no, creeper, look out. <gasps> no, you meanie. Oh, man. Oh, I dived out the way then. My reactions were amazing. It was still too slow. Oh, well. Right, I reckon I've solved the problem of the timing. It was a little bit more complicated than I thought. So what I've got is basically a uh, sticky piston underneath this block. I've got the one signal coming into it from our clock. And on that side, I'm sending a one tick pulse into those pistons. And I'm, uh, I'm delaying that one so it goes to those ones at a slightly different time. And now if we get some bone meal, you should hopefully see this working a little bit better. So it's slightly slower. I've had to put one tick of delay onto this whole system so it all matches up. No, I don't want to send my fish in. I want to put bone meal in and I want to see what happens. There we go. So, ah, it won't grow because I need to add that there and that there, I think. So it's got a chance to grow before it moves. Oh, and now it's not moving. Great. There we go. Now it's working. This is doing what it's supposed to be doing. So basically, it bone meals it and then it breaks it. So you just have to sort of stand there and then collect it. And look, I've got nearly a stack of blue orchids already. So I've just sort of wander around here on this weird moving grass. Or I could just leave it for a bit to pick up. I could even maybe even put some sort of hopper minecart system in place to do that for me. But I'm not 100% sure how I'd do that. I could just leave that running for a little while. Maybe if I had a hopper minecart running around this little area here, that could work. But it's going to be difficult to get it in there with all the other stuff going on. But there we go. That is working. That's great. It's noisy. It's very noisy. Um... But it, yeah, you get quite a lot of stuff from it. It's it's not the biggest area in the world, but it's just, I think it's as big as you can pretty much make it for one set of bone meal anyway. So that's not the end of the world. But look, two and a half stacks from that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to see how many orchids I get from one stack of bone meal. Right then, without breaking those two flowers that are on top, let's just pick up whatever just happened to fall down here. I think it's mainly seeds. Oh, there's some more over there. Let's see what we got. We got... Just over two stacks. So for one stack of bone meal, that's two stacks of blue orchids. That's pretty good for me. So we can add that to what we've already got over here. And look, we've got tons of it already. We can just make blue dye out of that. That's amazing. So if we go to that, how many blue dye do we get? Light blue dye. Is it one for one? Yeah, it's one for one. Okay, so that's not the best conversion in the world, but it'll do. It'll do. So I'm just going to run a load of this off and grab as much light blue dye as I can for, for all the bone meal I've got here. I'm going to make this on and offable by adding, if I go around this side, a lever to that. So if I flick that, that's just going to stop that and that'll stop it going. So I can leave bone meal in this and then other people can use this as they need to. So let's just pick up what's left. Why is it, how can it still be going? Okay, that's fine. Instead of putting the lever on there then, we'll put the lever on there. There we go. That'll stop it. Whew, that's better. Right, let's go grab everything we've got. I've thrown an absolute ton of seeds into the river just because I don't want seeds. I've got millions of seeds. Look, you can see them all down there. Oh, there's some orchids in there as well, look. But there's millions of seeds there, millions of seeds there. I've just picked them all back up again. I'm going to have to throw them all again now. But I was just showing you. Yes, I'm just going to finish off, get a little bit more, and then go home. Right, I've put a chest on there, a little sign here saying Fox's Blue Orchid slash Seed Farm add bone meal so people will know they can come along, just stick a load of bone meal in there. Um, hopefully they'll realise there's a switch on here if they want to uh, if they want to turn it off and on or maybe I should just leave it without bone meal in, I don't know. I'm going to pick up whatever's left on here, I'm going to go home and then, yeah, then we'll, that should do us for the day I think. And last before least, before we finish, I'm just going to make a very couple of very quick little... Uh, red dye farms and yellow dye farms by doing this so basically all that is is just a dispenser of putting bone meal into these two tall flowers and that gives you the rose bushes back as well and the sunflowers as well which you then turn into dye and you get two for each rose bush as well so you're doubling up on those ones now i could put hoppers and chests and things underneath those as well but i'm not going to bother i'm not really too fussed about it i'm just going to fill up a couple more shulker boxes full of these things and then that'll do us for the day i think here we go, we got a whole bunch of red dye and a whole bunch of yellow dye from all of that bone meal that we've added into there, so that's good. So we've got a load of blue, we've got a load of light blue, we've got a load of red, we've got a load of yellow. We can make all the other colours now, so let's go and see what colours we can make. And I know I can do the same thing I've done on those with these things, but I'm not too fussed about that because we can make those dyes 
from mixing the other ones together, I believe. So let's go see what we've got. Right, I believe that's all the ones we can make with them. So we've got all the orange, we've got all the yellow, we've got all the red, we've got all the pink, we've got all the light blue. I believe we need to smelt our cactuses to get that, but we need a cactus farm first. We need to grow our cocoa beans to get that. We need, I believe that's cactus green and bone meal. That's lapis and cactus green to make cyan. And then these ones are from those other flowers or mixing these together as well. So it's not too bad. We've done, we've done a, not a bad job. We've still got a ton left in these boxes, which is good. Um, yeah, so we've got plenty of dyes to get on with going forward, which is very, very good. This is what we wanted at the beginning of the episode. And I know we've got the greys and the blacks as well, but that's going to mean, that's going to mean squid ink, which is expensive, which means we're going to need a squid farm, which is, is not ideal, but we'll do it. We'll do it. So, uh, yeah, 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 very good. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to come and play on this server, then please do check out foxynotel.com and find all the different ways to join. Patreon isn't the only way, but it's the easiest and the quickest way. Uh, there are other ways to join. So yeah, if you want to come along and play, you'd be more than welcome. Um, and as for this video, I hope you enjoyed it. I know it was a bit of a mishmash, but hopefully it came together okay in the end. And as usual, I'd like to say thank you all very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, do please leave a like. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe. And hopefully, I'll see you all in the next one. Bye!